Greetings and salutations, I'm back down the shed. It's been a little bit later than I normally do these, but it's kind of been a bit hot these last few days, so I've been waiting for the sun to go down a little bit, make it a little bit more bearable down here. Plus I've been working on 3D stuff. Oh boy, I am not good at 3D. I can barely do things like this. Anyway, I'm down here today because I want to start getting these ready for painting. So the first things I need to do is I need to heat gun these new pieces of foam. Now I said in the other video that I really want to get all the heat gunning first but of course that was before I really thought about putting the details on. You also notice I've put all these new details on there. I've also added some like lace kind of details. I just thought that was a bit of fun. It helps break up the shape a bit more and I've done that on both. I've also taken to it with a pair of scissors to try and fake some dings in there but I still need to putty up things like this. I'm just gonna do one boot for now because I want to get at least one boot up to the first stage of sealing. So I'll see you in a boot. I'm, I mean a bit. That was a terrible gag and I love it. Okay, so we've got it all puttied up. Now, the first thing I forgot to mention is that I'm using a multi-purpose filler. You can get this from Bunnings. If you do having an issue with your putty drying out, add a bit of water to it and let it sit. And you can even sometimes poke in some of the dried up bits and they'll just kind of rehydrate over time. If you're having an issue with too much lumpiness, you know, add a bit of water or just, you know, scrape them off. I'm also using a scraper that looks like this maybe bunnings has them or maybe a jackson's or something like that i didn't pay much for this but it does the trick like 95 percent of the time ultimately you can get uh bigger ones if you're doing bigger projects so but for this kind of scale this is fine if you notice most of the bits i was putting is where the joins were when i was creating it it might seem kind of counterintuitive especially because i've weathered it by adding these marks you're probably going why not just leave them as is well the thing is with weathering you you're trying to make it look like something that happened randomly. Now, the problem with a mechanical opening like these ones is that it doesn't look like it was naturally occurred, especially if you're trying to go for something that looks produced. So yeah, I'm having to putty them up, flatten them out, sand it back, putty. It's gonna be two or three times I'm gonna to have to putty this at least. Biggest problem with foam, especially this kind of foam, it still has a tendency to move, which of course is Great for, you know, having a bit of flexibility to your prop. Not so good when you've got something like a putty, which is supposed to say solid. Now, this is where things get interesting. So what am I to do? What I've taken to doing is I'll add in a layer of puttying, do my sand down, and then I'll do my first coat of sealant. The sealant I'm going to be using, I don't actually have the, the bottled versions, but I do have my big 
tub of haters tears now this is one part pva glue one part wood glue and one part water this is the stuff that i was using over in malaysia with my good buddy john goon of elios he fame if you can get yourself a hand on some other good foam sealing alternatives by all means use them i wish plasti dip was cheap over here but where it's like two to three bucks a tin in america it's like 20 to 30 dollars here if you can find it this is way cheaper and this spreads out a lot more but of course you need to add about three to four coats the other problem is of course you're waiting on things to dry this time of year it's not so bad when it gets a bit colder you sometimes will have to use one of these puppies a heat gun so anything that's on a surface level with the putty tends to dry pretty quickly i mean you see this here it's already dried off but these bits here that's going to take a little while to dry you can always hit it with a bit of heat gun just gotta wait for this to warm up so while that's drying, that could take anywhere between an hour of an overnight, depend how big the gap is you're trying to fill, the temperature, stuff like that. This time of year, it's not too bad, but later on in the year when it gets to about winter, use a heat gun to quickly cure it. Now, the one thing I didn't point out, what I meant to earlier, is you might have seen on the, on the fast forward, is I was using the heat gun on the inside. If you've got a whole lot of stringy goodness, then hitting it with the heat gun, actually tends to reinvigorate the string and the force of the air tends to push it back onto the foam and make it stick there so it doesn't tend to peel off or at least you don't have this kind of web on the inside so that's just a quick tip just to get rid of some of that stuff but you've got to be careful because again it's heating up the foam it's going to respring back out you can see it's kind of bowed out again but i'm not entirely fussed but what i'm going to do now while that's drying is i'm going to make the other foot piece for this i want to quickly measure my leg with the boot just to see how much how high i can get this now there's a very good chance that this might not work <laughs> or at least might not work how i want it to so it's all part of experimentation i'm going to be using my remainder of my core flute to uh prototype this out hopefully by the time that's done uh this will be finished drying out and i can start sanding it and hopefully apply the first layer of haters tears so let's see how we go
Okay, so I tried to make this leg piece, didn't work. Just a bit too thin here. You know, I was just eyeballing it with this and that's the same dimensions as that. My lower leg's just a bit too fat, so I'm probably gonna make another one a bit bigger. Stupidly, I did two at the same time. I should have just done one and tested it, but I'm considering making this out of foam. I'll see about that. I've got to figure out what I want to do. I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking about building the entire costume out of foam except for the body because the body is a thing I'm more worried about being flexible and chipping. Other bits, not so much. Things like shoes and that, I don't mind having a bit of flex in them. Speaking of which, so I've just finished putting the first coat of Hater's Tears on the boot. The first coat is basically just the absorption coat. When you're dealing with things like foam and other materials that soak in a lot of material, you need multiple coats. The good thing about using a foam sealer is that instead of using the paint to seal it in, you're basically giving it something else to grip onto. The other good thing is with multiple coats of this, you'll end up with a nice reflective quality to the surface. You don't get that furry metal kind of look. As you can see, I did one layer of putty and one layer of Hades Tears. Now, once that's fully dry, most of this is already starting to dry, but there's some thicker areas here where there's a bit more of a buildup of uh, the foam sealant. That'll take a little bit to dry. It's a few days later, and this is such an impromptu update, I've even forgot to bring the recording equipment down here. I'm relying on the phone. However, I finished the boots, and here we go. And overall, I'm really, really liking that. There's a few imperfections, but as I've stated before, I honestly really don't care too much about that. I was going to be weathering up, so any kind of, it's a cheat, I'll be blunt, it's a cheat. Any imperfections doesn't truly bother me. This is supposed to be beaten up and worn and weathered. So anything going forward, you know, doesn't matter. The only problem I had is that I ended up getting this about, I think four or five coats all up and the first coat of primer, there's just all this pitting that happened all over it. I just covered it with a whole lot of putty and sanded it back and it's still coming through. But again, this is a, this is a shoe. Realistically speaking, no one's gonna be paying that much attention to this. You know, I'm not bothering too much with the detail. I only put a lot of these things on to really kind of break up that mundanity of the, just this pattern. So it's, it's just something to keep it interesting without taking a lot of effort. I mean, I've got a bit that's completely bodged here and it's, I'm not bothered. Now, I'll probably not be as cheap on when I come to doing like something like the helmet, the head, I guess. But for now, I've got both of them done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go get probably a, like a rubber mat with something with a grip on it and a buttload of a uh, contact adhesive. I'll slap all that down, glue the shoe on, and then I'll glue the foot on top of that and then they'll cut that out. Any screw ups I can just cover with, with the weathering. Now if you want to see what the weathering techniques I'm going to be doing, that's going to be on the weathering mechleth uh, video I've already produced. If you want me to go over again, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell down there to be notified for any new videos that come up. As I've stated just recently, my schedule is Monday, Friday, having a back down the shed video with the Wednesday either being a vlog or maybe another video I'll produce. We'll see how we go. So until next time, see ya.